Parents from gift, of gifted children have been in touch with me. I mean, we've over 30,000 children who are gifted in this country or exceptionally able, and there's no additional provisions for them unless their, their ability is, unless they have a learning difficulty as well. So, um, and I suppose that ties in a little bit with, with children who have maybe dyslexia or dyspraxia or dyscalculia. Um, and if their academic ability is above a certain percentile, they don't qualify for resources or even assistive technology, even though it might be recommended by the assessment. And I think that's unfair because these children are struggling. So they might be able, um, they might be very willing and, and interested in learning, but it is difficult because they're not getting the additional support to cope with their dyslexia. And I, I have parents tell me that the child is maybe masking at school a little bit, like, it's neurodiversity as well, they're masking the fact that they're not keeping up with their, their classmates, but it's, it's taken their toll on them. And I'm just wondering, is that something that can be changed? Because, you know, no matter what your ability is academically, if you have dyslexia or whatever it is, you, you deserve some support. I'm, I'm going to ask Brendan in a minute just to talk to you about the, the gifted children because I think it's something we're very conscious of as well. I know when we come to committees and we talk about children with complex needs, it tends to be that we look as if we're focusing just on the children in special schools and special classes on the children with a more complex need, but actually our work is to ensure that all children with special educational needs, about 25% of all children in our school system have a special educational need of some kind. So we want to ensure that the resources and supports we provide are meeting the need across that. And that includes, for example, children with dyslexia. And again, in talking maybe about the gifted children, Brendan might just touch on how our mainstream supports are also working. 20 years ago, I had a, a conversation with a young person about uh, the novel War and Peace. Uh, plot, plot development, characterization, the whole usual thing. The child was eight in second <laughs> class. Um, so. They are definitely out there, yeah. um, children with exceptional abilities. Um, if you look at the Education Act, children with special education needs are defined as being at both ends of the yeah. acad uh, academic spec spectrum. Um, we, we would hope and expect that in a setting, a school setting, that uh, a young person with that level of uh, exceptional ability or giftedness, um, that the teacher's response to the identified need would be appropriate, that differentiation of questioning and all, all the usual things would be the norm uh, in terms of the way the teachers would in, uh, um, engage with, with the young person. But the, the, the additional supports that have been provided to, uh, to schools through the SET model, for example, the, the, the key principle that underpins that is that the child with the greatest level of need should get the greatest level of support. Now, I remember having a conversation about going back to that young child that I came across um, so, the, so those many years ago, the, the principal was concerned about that child, um, not because of academic ability, he was streets ahead of everybody else in the school, but he, he had difficulty in fitting in. He had difficulty in engaging with his peers. So the school was allocating resource um, appropriately to uh, some of the additional support that was in the school uh, in order to meet that need. And it was purely around social uh, programs. It wasn't about academics because that wasn't necessary at all. So, you know, we, we would hope and expect that schools would adopt that type of approach. Um, it, it is also uh, something that we're focusing on in the department at the moment. Uh, we have established uh, a working group recently uh, with a regard to um, the provision of support and guidance for schools uh, in respect of children with exceptional abilities. And I think it's important to say, when we talk about exceptional abilities, we're not just talking about academics here. Mm -hmm. You know, there are young people with exceptional ability in music, in art, in sports, and the whole range of uh, activities in school. So there was, I don't know if you're aware of this, there was a draft uh, guidance document issued to schools in 2007 by NCCA. It was only ever draft, though. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've asked the group to look at, in particular, is that set of guidance uh, that was produced for, for the schools at the time. Now, bearing in mind that we've had so many reform measures in our system since 2007, that certainly needs to be updated. And, and hopefully, one of the outcomes of this work will be the provision of uh, specific guidance for schools in this area. So that would mirror what is done in other jurisdictions as well.